years, even before the current ownership of Studio Designer, um, I was able to consult with the original owner and creator of Studio Designer, which was formerly Studio Webware, and even prior to that, Studio Desktop, okay? For those of you that are super old school. Um, I've been a certified consultant for this company for over a decade. I know their software in and out, best practices. In these next series of videos, I basically give you all the tools that you need to successfully own, operate, and manage your interior design or architect firm, okay? I include step-by-step -step processes for just about everything from setting up a brand new studio designer account, um, the process for project management and what that looks like, and the best practices for accounting and maintaining the books that we've set up. I think oftentimes when I see issues in studio or incorrect um, processes it's because somebody is just trying to get by um, with the knowledge that they have and trying to implement that and kind of just doing some workarounds within studio but in actuality studio is designed um, to address all the different ways I've seen people do business and it's just identifying the correct one because it's so customizable and like i say this all the time nobody does business exactly the same it's best to understand you know what it is you're trying to do and that's often when i say if you're you're going to encounter or hit something new in your business wouldn't it make sense to do things properly and just find out how to get this in there correctly set up Okay, because I feel like a lot of times um, people just aren't well versed in the different things that you kind of need to know in order to make things happen, not just in studio, but in any software that you're using. Okay, um, there's the, the process from an interior designer's eyes, the creative process. There's the finance and accounting piece from a business management and accounting standpoint. And the last piece of it is obviously the way it's going to look for our client and what they need to see, right? And all the things that kind of go in line with that. So I'm going to just go over something in ter terms of laying down the foundation for a progress billing of some sort, okay? So when I say progress billing, oftentimes if we're talking a design fee, like a flat fee for interior design services, you know, consulting fees, there's um, time billing that we can put in, but I feel that that is very, um, I, I mean, I've seen a lot of people do it that way and there's pros and cons. For me personally, when I see progress billing, um, it that are that is not, related to an item right we're just talking progress billing for whatever it is okay um i'm gonna i'm gonna address that here and kind of talk about the different um things that you're going to want to consider when when going into something like this okay so okay i'm gonna just set up a new item i'm just gonna i don't know pick a pick a vendor um, I want to make sure that I point out um, sales codes. When we're adding all these different sales codes, I want to make sure that people understand that you don't always need a bunch of new sales codes. Um, if for some reason you aren't using the sales codes that are in place, um, I would recommend overwriting one that you know you're not going to use as opposed to um, setting new ones up because they, they all tie to different things. And I, that's usually where I see a lot of mistakes. But um, moving to progress billing, like for, an, for a situation where um, this, this client already agreed to a $50,000 you know, design fee, okay? Um, that's not gonna exempt me from tracking time or chipping away at it, setting it up to make sure that we remember all of these details, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and put labor, okay? Because design fee usually is still considered labor if we wanted to 
set one up, we can even just go ahead and let's just do a time billing. Okay, that that's a good way to do that. And in a case like this, um, where we are treating the fee separately, I may make um, a room called miscellaneous, or I may make a room called um, design fee. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I'll do just that. Um, okay, I'll just say um, um, design fee. Um, okay, and then we're just going to leave it as that, and I'm, I'm gonna explain how I'm going to use this, okay? You're gonna go ahead and um, you know, break it up as many times as you see fit. But in this case, I'm going to just say, um, you know, um, okay, and I will just say um, um, design fee um, for client agreement. Um, to be paid out as follows. Okay, and I'm just going to, you know, you can break it out however you want to, and you know, I'm just going to do 50%, um, 50% down, and let's see. I'm going to pause right here so I can review the details on this. Okay, so I've reviewed some details and I just made some hypotheticals, okay? So based on this, let's just say, if we're talking about a 50K design fee per the client contract, 50% being due at contract signing means we would have received it, right? In order for us to take this client on, we would have got it. So let's just say that there is the 50% down and, um, 25% upon starting or 90 days after contract signing. I just made these up, you know. So basically, we would be saying, if that was the case, then the, you need to understand that anything that you put here is like a proposal, meaning this is what we need to get going. And basically, at completion is when you owe the final balance, the, the final payment and any other balance okay there's a number of ways you can do this okay in the case that I'm doing this right now let's just say three seven five I may do this um, oops I will not do that um, seven five hundred and um, it shouldn't be taxable but it it's I'm gonna leave it at as yes for now so you can see that there is sales tax okay so on this okay if your um, design services do not um, get taxed in your location and I'm going to change it because <laughs> the majority of places don't okay however it is very clear on a lot of um, uh, design services if the, your services result in sales of goods or products or finished goods then usually those are sales taxable okay I'm putting no for the sake of this even though I probably should be in this tax location but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it as no okay and move on so that being said um, I'm gonna just put 37,500 here, okay? And I, I, wanna, I wanna basically show you what that does, okay? If we were to create a proposal, and I will, okay? Um, okay, so if I were to create a proposal, it is going to ask for 37,500, even though the 50% down was due at signing. Now, how that would be reflected here was that we would have applied that um, $25,000 payment. And so that means when we send the proposal out, 
which would really be 90 days at, at con after signing the contract, that would be, you know, when I would send this out. I'd probably send it before, obviously, and, and say when it was due. But basically, that would be for the balance. That would be the 12500 okay? And then at the end, when we invoice, that is when the, the remaining twelve five is due, okay? That is one way to do that, okay? Now, let me, let me show you. By doing it in components, okay, you can also do components. So you can do it this way. And I'm just showing you because I want you to see how quick and easy it is. So I saved it. Now I cloned it. Okay, now I just want you to see what this is. This is basically creating the um, second component, which would be um, this 12,500, okay? And then um, you can always do um, do it like this if you were doing it in components, okay? Um, and you can, I, you know, you can change it to reflect the right, the right amount. So I'm just gonna kind of break it out. So right here, I'm, I'm doing it in components and I'm gonna show you what this does, okay? Um, let's, let me take this one and clone it because this is the main one, okay? And then um, I would make this C, and we can do it like this. Um, okay, so I'm just going to show you what this does. So if I were to put these all on the proposal, so I'm gonna just add them all on, okay? Because I want you to see what this can do. Okay, so what, I, what you can do, you can show this a number of ways, right? Um, when you want to hide things, okay? And I'm gonna show you what I mean, okay? You can show all the items. You can also just do first component. First component is only going to show, oops. First component usually is gonna only show, like, and this may be different. I'm gonna have to look at the setup. The first component usually only shows the first item and everything else is rolled under, okay? And let me move that, okay. And let's see. And I usually won't um, show all of them or add all of them to pr the proposal. However, you can put them on in a, like all like this. You can also, um, hide them let's that's why it didn't it didn't number correctly that's okay so you can see why numbering and you'll hear me stress this a lot numbering your items is so important especially when there's a ton of items and we're going back and forth and talking about them so now when I PDF it we can first component okay and right now you can see you can, you can um, see that it's all of the total right now, okay? That's because all the items are there, but at different points in time, you can add and remove them. So um, without invoicing, okay? If you choose to invoice, that is fine too. But, but basically, um, I, amounts aren't due and payable until they are invoiced. So what that means, and I'll just show you, okay, is I can remove this from this proposal because it's not yet due, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 
So if I wanted to say, okay, well, just the standard design fee, the 50% is, is due now, okay, we can, we can do that. And how that would look is by sending it like this, okay? So I can send it like this. I can, um, I don't even have to show all the items. I can even just do it like this, even though there is just one item here now. So this is what it would look like, right? We can even um, hide the other, you know, payment or uh, percentages. But basically this is how we would get the payment. This is a proposal, okay? And then the great part about doing this is when you are to filter with your design fee here, you can see that the other things are not even on there yet, okay? You can see that they're not proposed, they're not due, they're not anything, okay? So that is why we would set them all up. When you want to add this to the proposal, you can simply just add it to the proposal and then you can send it to them again. You can send it on the same proposal or send it on a new one. And the great part about this is you can hide or show the amount. So in the case where we would, you know, they would already have paid that, that piece of it would be 25000 And then you could either send this on its own proposal or add it to this and invoice it out. Or it's, it's a matter of how you want to account for it and what it is you're, you're doing. Okay. There, there, there's a number of reasons why you would account for things in a certain way. Okay, one of the main things is studio does not recognize income or expense until the item is invoiced. You hear me say this a lot, almost constantly when we're talking about items. Okay, that means if they pay this um, and I pulled your financials, this is not going to show up as income until we invoice it. That goes the same. So let's say I put it here, both on the same proposal. That does not mean that I could not um, invoice. I could go, totally go ahead and invoice this piece of it and have this piece not, not invoice, but paid, okay? So there's a number of different ways you want to do that, but this is the best way because it, this is how we make sure that we do not miss anything. And when I say miss anything, it means, you know, does anybody, I, I see a lot of um, companies leave money on the table because they're either invoicing, you know, late or incorrectly or untimely, or they simply just miss it, even in cases where a client may not owe anything. There's a reason why you do these processes because you wanna make sure that you're accounting for the sales tax and for everything else in the right periods, okay? I think that's often overlooked, but um, let's let's clarify exactly how and what we are um, progress billing, okay? And in cases where this might be um, more like a GC or you're doing um, some type of construction, we're still gonna do the same thing, okay? You can, um, you can either show it as a single item, you can do it in components like this, you can do it even under um, time billing, okay? And, and I don't have problems with time billing, however, when we're talking in terms of progress, progress billing, I like to see items because I know that I, I will never close out a project without making sure everything is closed out, okay? So if there are questions or anything else that we need to dive into, let me know.